guy's got this Thunderbird because we found it in the, one of the magazines. Mm -hmm. And he goes, yeah, that's Matt Hayes car. And he's a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. So that's how that all became. Okay. And then apparently somewhere I talked to the art director during the shoot when we didn't have to do anything. And they, he, he really liked all these old eighties pro street cars. Okay. He was really into it. Okay. So obviously he caught Dobberson's J2000 mm -hmm. graphics okay. and he, Photoshopped them onto the plane, and that's really? why you see that. So the J, so the J two thousand graphics are on the airplane. Yes. Okay. Which is okay. really interesting now. Yes. Which is yes. really you got the Thunderbird Absolutely. in that. Yeah. So that's yeah. how that came about. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And then you ended up with the J two thousand. Yes. Okay. After we have to do that quickly because we're running out of time. All right. Well, <laughs> I mean, so we. Uh, <laughs> I me, told you we could do two hours, oh man. We could do two hours yeah. so easy. Hey, welcome to Car Guy Confessions, brought to you by ARP. I'm Jeff Smith. This is my car buddy, Cam Benzie, and car builder, Steve Strope, and we're going to tell you some stories. Welcome to another episode of Car Guy Confessions with Jeff Smith. we got two special guests this time, Matt and Debbie Hay. We've known, I've known you guys for, oh, what? 40 years, something 40 like that? 40 years. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. been that long. So, first of all, we want to thank our friends at ARP-Bolts.com for helping us with all this stuff. We couldn't do that without them. We also want to thank the guys, John Buck and Kevin Kevin Doyle from Grand National Roaster Show. That's where we are right now. We, we've escaped from our bat cave, and we're recording here. But um, these guys are here because of the Pro Street deal for, for this year for the for the Grand National Roaster yes, Show. Sir, yep. And there's some wonderful cars over there. Amazing Your cars. cars, Rick Dobberson's cars. Scott, Scott Sullivan, Sullivan, Mark Grimes. Mark Grimes' is Chevelle. It's just it's an amazing, it's amazing, amazing deal. Yes. And as, and you guys were signing autographs for a couple hours. That was kind of fun. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, that yeah. was fun. So, so we want to start, tell some stories here because you guys have been at this a very long time. Yes, right? we have. Right? Yep. So the first car probably was uh, this. You, you guys were living in Indiana, right? Yep. Northern yeah. Indiana, Northern. a town called Goshen. Okay. The first car that we built was a 66 Mustang. Okay. Yeah, and we just had to do something different, so we put the small block Chevy in it. Uh -huh. and yeah, which made everybody unhappy. Oh, right? everybody was uneasy. <laughs> <laughs> but I tipped my hat. They kind of knew I was strange. Uh -huh. So uh, and then uh, I think 1978 is our first week. Started really going places, went to, to the Street Machine National. Uh -huh. so it was in Indianapolis yep. and at the time. And Deb and I weren't married yet. And when we, when we got to Indianapolis, it just blew our mind at the Street Machine Nationals because of we just, you know, being in a small town in northern yeah. Indiana. 5,000 5, cars. 5,000 cars. 5,000 yeah. cars at the Indy Fairgrounds. Wow. Yeah. Which was just jammed in there. My, that was 78, right? Yes. My yes. first year was 79, so I was a year after that. But, right. but I mean, 5,000 cars, it all sold out in a matter of like a month and a half. Oh, yeah. 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 And it sold out faster as years went by. Yes. You had, I mean, it was like you we had to FedEx your, your entry FedEx in because if overnight. you weren't there on the day, you probably weren't going to get in. And, and that's right. Came into the offices in, in boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff. Sounds <laughs> yeah, amazing. That's right. So the Mustang was was the first real effort, right? Yes, yes. It, it was it was you know, like a street machine in 78, big tire sticking out and right. what, everything hanging out. Right. And then in 79, uh, we... We narrowed the rear end because that was, you know, narrowing the rear end like a, a race car was that was what you wanted to do. That was the big trend coming up. Not it wasn't called tubbed or pro street at the time. There or wasn't it was, a term for it. No, that, that was, was too just, early. It was just narrow yeah. the rear end, which yeah. meant putting, you know, narrowing it and putting big meats under uh -huh. there. So in 79, that's when we started that and a lot of other so, cars. So there's a special story around that oh. <laughs> <laughs> that you told me. Oh, regarding the rear end. Uh, re regarding the rear end, how you got it. Yes. Yeah. So you guys were not married yet. No. No, we weren't married. And you'd found the rear end. Yeah. It was uh, a, a, a race car driver, a guy that was building an uh, NHRA car. Yeah, he was a guy that uh, ran a, some uh, like an E-Gas or something, uh, Corvette. Corvette, yeah. And, it, of course, it was uh, a narrowed. And uh, he, his name was Jerry Marcourt, and he had a speed shop mm -hmm. in a small town, a competition engineering and that's where we had the engine built and whatnot. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, between 78 and 79, I was, okay, where am I going to find or how do I afford a right. rear end, you right. know, big tires? Because that, that was a big deal. Oh, it was very oh. expensive. It was all custom done. Yes, yeah, yeah. There well, weren't shops building it back then. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. So it was just, you know, where are we going to find that? What are we going to do? I didn't have the, the means or the money at the time. But I went down to the speed shop and I was telling Jerry what I wanted to do. And he goes, well, Matt, he says, I'm changing the rear end out of my Corvette and I'll sell you the, the rear end, the tires and the wheels and, and the wheelie bars, you know, for, uh -huh. I, I think it was $1,500 or okay. something like that, which yeah. was, you know, the moon. Right. It was a lot right. of money. <laughs> and I told Deb about it 
And of course, she's Deb's been supportive the whole time. You know, it's just from the day one. Yes. And um, I didn't realize it, but she somewhere in this couple day time, she snuck off to the bank and did a cosign with her father. So you talked yes. your dad into borrowing the money to buy a part for his car. And we how did that work? Because <laughs> you guys first told me that story. I was like, first of all, my first thought was. How do I meet a woman like that, right? <laughs> right? So, so how did you do that? Because then looking at it from a father's standpoint, it's like <laughs> my daughter that? come to me and said, I want to borrow $1,500 so he can put a rear end in his car. I'm like, no. And then he's gone <laughs> next <laughs> month? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, first of all, he was the first guy that my dad actually liked. Okay, well, that, that's, that's a good start. There's yeah. a good start. And um, actually, Matt, you kind of moved into my dad's shop. Yes. Your Mustang. Okay. Yeah. Because I work on him. So we got to know him pretty well, but uh -huh. I just went and asked my dad. I don't even know why I had the guts to do that. <laughs> but he goes, sure. Yep. And he signed, co signed. That's such and an amazing And it just blew me story. away. So yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So then I knew she was a keeper. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And I could yeah. still talk to her, the dad, you yeah. know, father in law. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was how that all wow. came about. That's such a great story. I mean, we could, if that's the only story we had, that would be a great podcast. But yeah. it's just the beginning. So oh. you guys built that car. Mm -hmm. It was in the magazine. Did Carcraft shoot it in 79? I don't remember no, if did. No, it was the first issue it was ever in was a Hot Rod magazine. Okay. It was hot a rod. small little article. Uh -huh. uh, a, I think it was a color shot. and uh, But I'm sorry, it was in 78, Hot Rod did it okay. in color. Uh -huh. And it was had the, the tire sticking out, the M5014 tires. Uh -huh. It was a street yeah. machine at right. the time. Right, right. And then in 79, I think Hot Rod, Carcraft, and several... You know, magazines did it. Uh -huh. uh, not really big features. Popular hot riding did it. Yeah. And that's that's an interesting in seventy nine, if you get the seventy nine March issue, I think, of popular hot riding, there's on the cover there's a, a three cars and one of them Scott Sullivan's Blue Nova. Right. Which Nova. That, that thing was incredible. Exactly. It still is. Yeah. Oh yeah. And but in in inside the pages they did a real nice article on the our mm -hmm. uh Mustang. So that was seventy nine. <laughs> <laughs> and so 79 and then and, and they actually coined it pro street now i don't okay. think they're the originals but there's always you know who what where who when did, yeah exactly but and, that's what i've always heard too that, yeah. that popular hot run did it first so, yes you know and that and that's fine that that works really really well so and because it, it encompassed the whole thing because if, if you have a trend going on and you give it a name then everybody knows what you're talking about Yes, and that was the beginning of it. Yep. Yeah, that was the, the the progenitor, if you yeah. want, of the whole thing. So, what followed the the Mustang? Well, we we changed it around for several years. I think for three or four or five years, coloring basically. Uh -huh. Just that's all we could afford to do something new for the next year was throw a different paint job on it, yeah. and I think a scoop or something was always different. And then what followed that was um, we found a. Uh, I always wanted to do a 79 Mustang, mm -hmm. the, the, the body lines. And there was a couple. Dino Don uh, ran one for a very short time. In, in Pro Stock? Uh, yeah. Yes. And a, uh, another guy that uh, ran it, another Ford guy in Pro Stock. And I, I said, man, this is the ticket. So, Hey, we'd like to thank our sponsor, ARP-Bolts.com. we got a fantastic little backdrop here. They make it an outstanding series of bolts, almost anything you would need for engines, chassis, things like that. In fact, we were at lunch today, and a guy asked you about the the, the bolt on the back of your shirt, and it was, and, it was really, and I said, well, it's really about a head bolt. They neck the, 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 the stem down of the bolt on a short a small block Chevy head bolt, so the clamp load is even across three different head bolt lengths on a small block Chevy. And, uh, you know, so that, that's the kind of technology that you get out of sure. ARP. And uh, we, we've all got stories on all that right. stuff. Uh, but, for a uh, translation of what he said, call ARPbolts.com. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the message is that you can't get any better than that. No, you so cannot. There yep. you go. Nope. Excellent. And then just check him out at ARP-bolts.com. We'd like to thank our friends at InTheGarageMedia.com. They have three fantastic magazines. They've got Classic Truck Performance. They have Modern Rotting and my favorite, All Chevy Performance, with Nick, my buddy Nick, oh, the so editor. Oh, you're so biased. So, yes, of course. Yes. But uh, they're doing print media, which yes. is, uh, of course, our favorite. So, uh, in color magazine. and everything. In color and everything. Yes. And, and you can get your, your car on the cover of one of those books, right. which is right. a fun no, that's deal. A lot. Great yeah. tech. You Great can, tech. By you you know, not always are, written by me, but yeah. People. Yeah. Not yeah. always written by me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Just so pick it up and read it. At yes. InTheGarageMedia.com, and uh, they're our friends, and uh, they will thank you. 
we I saw one in the paper uh, for sale, you know, in the old ads in the mm-hmm. back, and 79 Mustang, and I wanted, of course, the hatchback. Yeah. You know, have it. And it didn't say what it was. When I talked to the guy, he lived in a neighboring town for sale, and I was all excited, oh, yeah, let's, you know, something that we can afford. And I, all the way over there, I kept telling him, I never know, I don't know if it's a hatchback or, you know, a notchback. notchback. Yeah, right. We got there, it was a, it was a the hatchback, uh-huh. and it was silver, and it was just, that was it, you know. Yeah. So I got a hold of um, Alston uh, Engineering, and, you know, I ordered, they sent me a cat dog and just mm-hmm. ordered a chassis and everything out of that. And, and, uh, we took the engine from the 66 okay. and the rear end from okay. the 66, uh-huh. but the tires... The famous big. narrowed rear end. That's right. That's <laughs> right. So the tires were too big, uh, the ones that were on the rear end for the... So we had to go to smaller tires. We uh-huh. c- couldn't get Mickey's at the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. So they were McCreary's. They, yeah, they were dirt track tires. Right, right? Yeah. yeah, McCreary's. Yeah. Back and then, I, yeah. I found those at, uh, I think, at some swap meet or something. I don't really remember, but it was a swap meet. And I thought, these are perfect. And that's, uh-huh. what, that's so basically the drivetrain. But this had the full chassis in it, yeah. where the Mustang was back half. Right, right. The 66. So the mm-hmm. 79 was a full chassis, and that was our first attempt at that. Uh-huh. And, and that uh, made it on a few covers, didn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that was, that a, was a, Just that, about everybody's cover, right? Yeah, that mm-hmm. was a fun car. And that's, well, we can get to it later, but that kind of car is what, uh, you know, Rick Doberton and I... Uh, we knew of each other, but we didn't know each other. And, and uh, mm-hmm. I remember to this day, the first year we had it out, which was in uh, 83. Okay. It was sitting at the Street Machine Nationals, and, you know, Rick's walking by with his entourage. <laughs> and I, I go, hey, Deb, look, Deb. It's, look, look, it's look, look who that is. Look who that is. <laughs> well, Rick, Rick actually stopped and looked at the car. Uh-huh. said, man, that thing is slung. <laughs> and I go, oh. <laughs> I'm delivered. I've been acknowledged. Yeah, that's yes. right. I've been acknowledged. So the next year, the license plate on it said slung. Slung. Yeah. 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 But he, he also commented to me later as we got to know each other really well. He goes, you know, I never forget that car because the first time I saw it, some guy came up and goes, and it was, we were driving by and standing by Rick. He goes, man, that Ford, that thing, there's Ford power. Listen to that Ford power go by. <laughs> and Rick goes, go look at the motor. And it had the Chevy in it. <laughs> the Chevy yeah, motor. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so that's and that did really well for us, and and uh, and that we took it to the Street Machine Nationals, obviously, and 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 that's when competition engineering was, then was running the Pro Street competition. Was running Pro Street, yep, yep. And that was like and it was Fred Gurley. Fred Gurley, Fred Gurley. yes, yes. And it, there was there was rules right down to. The, I mean, you had to have you know everything a pro stock car had. And everything a, a street, street car, car yeah. yep, including exactly. a current license, you had to bring your registration. You had mm-hmm. to have everything. Yep. So it all came down to points. And uh, the first year uh, we entered it in '83. Uh, oh, that's a nice car. That's a nice car. But and they gave me some pointers. They said, uh-huh. you know, if you had this, you could, you know, and you had that. So the next year, uh, during the, the winter months, I did what they did, and we went back in '84 and won. <laughs> and it Excellent. was yeah, it was really cool. Very cool. So, yeah. yeah. I think the one thing that was stands out to me is <clears throat> from the beginning the events inspired us so much that yeah. when we were on our way back home we would decide what we we're going to do for the next year really and right there on the talk. trip oh, home. oh yeah really? so right we that was the whole topic what do you want to yeah. do for next year what do we do what, what's it look like you it, know it wasn't about whether or not you're going to do it it's we've already, you've already made that commitment yeah. yes. right <laughs> it's what, yeah. what what we're going to do yeah and then the friends we met uh-huh. we met so many people oh, yeah. that we even know oh yeah now. today yeah today, absolutely yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so cool. what was next after that? Then was that the Sierra? The old Sierra. The Sierra. Yeah. And that was, uh, it was, by that time, you know, we got to know, you know, our cars, I think, were pretty simple, but it's the best we could do. But at that time, we started getting noticed by the magazines mm-hmm. and by suppliers, manufacturers. Hey, you know, right. you know, if you're going to go here, we'll throw in a set of valve covers or, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And we thought, wow, that's incredible, you know. So... We started thinking along the lines of, you know, let's be different. You know, a, a, a 79 Mustang with a Chevy in it was different because mm-hmm. he had a lot of Camaros, Novas, Mustangs. And, sure. And uh, so that was kind of a launching pad. And then we thought the Sierra. And we were at, uh, there was a dealership in Phoenix called Edwards Oles. And we went. Because this time you guys had moved. To oh, yes. Yeah, right. yeah, we right. moved. Right. In fact, we, we moved. To somewhere yeah. too. What's that? What's oh, that? yeah, there was that. <laughs> What's that? Because you married. got married. Oh, yeah. Well, that was in 1980. Okay. So that was in 1980. And, okay. uh, yeah. And we're still here, still together. But, so uh, that's what, 44 years? Going to be, this yeah. Year, yeah. Congratulations. Oh, man. thank that's you. That's fantastic. Yeah. You know, especially this day and age. Yeah. 
I oh. certainly can't make that claim. <laughs> <laughs> but you can start. You I can get to start, 40. start right now. Yeah, I've got right. 40 years to get, yeah. catch up. Right? That's right. <laughs> I don't know. We'll be there when that. <laughs> Where's my teeth? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh! So, so the Sierra, you went to an old dealership? Yeah, we went. I, you know, I just for some reason I saw one in a magazine. And, and, you know, it, it's a uh, family car. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it front wheel drive. It's a front wheel drive. Fa yeah. And yeah. boat, you know, not a boat, but just a box family, you know, grocery yeah. getter. Yeah. And uh, I just saw, you know, start thinking outside the box, and we, I think we bought the car brand new. For ten thousand eight hundred bucks, and I'll never forget the the salesman said something about extended warranties and, this yeah. and I said no, no, we, we don't need that. No, I said base, and it was base, base, no, no, nothing. You yeah, know, base yeah. price. <laughs> we bought it because he didn't know what you were going to do with it. No, <laughs> no, not not at that time. And I remember uh, we drove it home, and we drove it I think for two weeks. And I remember going out to dinner, and I remember going a few places with it. And I said, "Man, this is this thing rides and drives really nice." Yeah, you know, we yeah. never had something that, and uh, we'll rip it apart. Yeah, <laughs> so we took it back to a house that we were renting because we just moved to Phoenix, and uh, we were renting. And I, you know, it was a front engine car, so we just, I jacked it up, dropped out the, dropped the out the cradle, uh -huh. yeah, and everything, and. And started going at it, and then we found a house uh, the next November, I think it was, where we ended up, we're still at that same house. It was mm -hmm. just a block away. Yeah. So we got it, got it on a trailer and towed it down there and finished it there. But well, you know, again, we wanted to do something different. And I, I don't, we were just stuck on the Chevrolet small block, and then we went out and did the uh, Enderly fuel injection, mm -hmm. on it. and then yeah. we had to do the uh, surge tank deal yeah. and all that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, so. And, of and that course, was mechanical fuel injection. Yes. That was before electronic came along. Oh, yes. Really, oh, yeah. really, I mean, it was just on the leading edge of it. So right. that was, yeah, yeah. Just, and it, it ran really well, you know, and then... Um, <coughs> ran on alcohol. Ran yeah. on alcohol, yeah. yep. So there's none left for me. <laughs> 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 but we wanted to do something that was... So, we, of course, the, 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 the transmission of choice back then was like the Nash 5-speed and stuff like right. that. And right. then the real choice was the Lenko. Sure. So there was a, a guy that had a Lenko out of a funny car that we were able to purchase, and that's how the Lenko came across. And uh -huh. of course, it's a whole new rear end in that. I think, believe that was a Dana rear end. Okay. So that's how yeah. that came about. And then we threw a paint job on there. I had to wait, you know, with length in the wheel wells and everything, mm -hmm. and then we, we painted it a color at the time I thought was kind of in. And then in a, at the end of the season, I ended up, Taking all the paint off, repainting, and putting a heartbeat on it. Okay. Yeah. And then we put it on the cover with with Warren Johnson's car. Wasn't that was that yes. that car? Yes. We yeah. Went, we went with yeah. Carcraft. Yeah. Oh, and that was uh, the day that uh, Challenger. Exactly. We were at the studio shooting it. And yeah, that's down when at, the Challenger crashed. Yeah. Down at. Uh, yeah. I'll Tucson. never forget that. Yep. Down in yep. Tucson. Yep. And uh, Paul Martinez's studio, yep. I think. Yeah. And, yeah. and and Deb was pregnant with our son in the photo. Really. Yes. Really. Yeah. yeah. So that was fun because we got Warren Johnson to bring his race car in. And we put his car in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> John Thurd, he was thrilled, right? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, because we, we just called Oldsmobile and said, hey, we'd really like to have Warren Johnson's car on the cover with this other Oldsmobile. And they called him and said, can you do this? And and that was my relationship. That was the start of my relationship with, with, uh, with him. But he, was, he had actually come from Minnesota. And I told him at that show, I remember talking to him or when we were shooting it, that, that we used to race at, at a drag strip in northern Iowa. And he brought his pro stock Camaro down to run the oh, big, nice. big block black Camaro down from Minnesota. You know, we were like, ooh, yeah. Johnson's yeah. here. You know? yeah. We were first round losers, if anybody's interested. So, <laughs> <laughs> so how long did you keep that car? Three, four years? Uh, yeah, like we, we we were fortunate again with that one. The first time out, we took it to Hot Rod Nationals, mm -hmm. uh, Street Machine Nationals, and whatever else was going on at the time. And we were fortunate again in 80, that was in 86, that we won the Street Machine, uh, Pro Street again, the championship. Yeah. Yeah. And we kept that. And then, so then we had it, that was 86, we had it in 87. And we went to the Street Machine Nationals in 87, but in the meantime, we had Ford had contacted us and wanted to do something with them. Okay. And which was interesting is they, I, I was wanting to do a Ford Tempo. Okay. That was stretched because uh -huh. Bernstein had a Tempo at the time. Right. And I just liked right. the way it looks. Like, could you imagine yeah. that on the street? Yeah. Oh. And <laughs> Little car with a big engine. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wanted to stretch it, you know, yeah. so because 
this is what we wanted to do. And I, and I had this guy that worked for me that was somewhat of an artist. I said, can you just do me a quick rendering of a tempo mm -hmm. stretched with a supercharger and a, an injection coming out? He said, yeah. So he did that. And that year in 87, I believe it was early 87, uh, well, whenever SEMA was, so okay. in late 86. Yeah, yeah. Uh, late 86, I was all like, in, in Jerry Green, head of SVO. Yes. He was he was in charge of doing stuff with us. Uh -huh. And uh, so Deb and I went up to there and we go, oh, this is, you know, go find a Ford booth. We walk in there and I was all proud of myself. And I said, well, what do you, and they asked us, what would you like to do? And mm -hmm. I said, well, here's a rendering, yeah. a rough rendering of what we want to do. And he goes, a tempo. You know, he just didn't like, he, they, they just didn't like the idea of a tempo. He said, okay. no, no, no. He says, he said, we'd rather you do a, uh, a T-Bird. Yeah. He said, our T-Bird's 88 is going to be the last year, and then we're going to go to the the new model, Thunderbird, which was a turbo thund or something. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah. and um, so, you know, okay, we'll do the, you know, Thunderbird. Uh -huh. And then we went up to a, a, a dealership that was up in Scottsdale. I think it was called Ralph Thomas Ford. They had dolphins swimming. <laughs> you know, yeah, at, at the uh, wow. at the dealership. Wow. And I went and looked at Thunderbirds. You know, I started thinking, okay, you know, that would work. And uh, so they, they sent us a brand new 88 Thunderbird uh, in early 87. So we started whacking that apart. So how did you get a chance to drive it at all? No, 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 no. <laughs> No. They, of course, they, they ripped off the uh, tag. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. And they so, so it essentially it was probably maybe it was an engineering car. Or was yeah. it? Was it, was it a real production car? Oh, it was a real production. It was a real car. production yeah. car. It was a turbo coupe too. Okay. And right. I ended up selling all the parts that we didn't need to mm -hmm. help finance the deal. Sure. But I remember Jerry calling. He says it's going to be another month or so because they were going to send us one. He said he, he looked at it and had a big hole cut out of the rear quarter panel. <laughs> I said, "Well, I appreciate that." Yeah. And the car we was, don't really want that one. No, the car was nice, <laughs> but of course they yanked the uh, VIN number off of it, mm -hmm. which wasn't a problem. Excuse me, we just um, got it. Uh, the police uh, police officer came out and inspected everything. Right. I had receipts for the rear end and the motor and everything mm -hmm. like that. And they just assigned a different VIN yeah, number to it. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. So that's, and yeah. so we debuted that at the SEMA show at the Ford Rotunda in '88. '88. Yeah. So you built that car in a year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was. So that was every night, every weekend, <laughs> yeah. right? Oh, Thrash yeah. all the time. Yeah. All yeah. the time. And, and you then, guys just started a family. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> we had a. Yeah. <laughs> so again, no sleeping was involved, right? No. But back in those days, you could do that. I right? could do that. Yeah, yeah. You could operate on four or five hours of sleep a night. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. Work all day and then come home and work on the car. Yeah. Oh, and and then was there any special reason for the for the for the for the blower the front mounted blower or you just didn't want the big thing sticking through the hood? Uh, yes, I I didn't want the thing sticking through the hood. I, we right. had done a couple cars that way, and and you know there's a lot of cars out there like right. that, and right. that was it's still that was all cool stuff. So, uh, you know, as we said. I always liked the Potvin mm -hmm. blower setup of yeah. the dragsters, and you know I just thought that would be cool. But you know, I checked on prices and the availability of those things, and, and I thought, well, th the best thing to do is to start from scratch. So yeah. we, we got a couple of B&M blowers, and I wanted to stick them down in front, reverse the rotation, so the mm -hmm. belt drives them in reverse. Sure. And uh, uh, Miss Jim Davis at B&M yeah. was kind enough yeah. to participate uh -huh. in this project. Yep. So he sent me a couple of blower cases, and then I made the plenum and everything out of wood. Wow. I mean, literally just two by fours of scrap wood. Really? And I was on the floor of the, the shop <laughs> pounding these things together with nails. And then I'd shape them after I had the rough shape. Uh -huh. And I still had that buck. I still, really? Yeah, I still really? have that the piece of wood. That's in very the, cool. Which is now, of course, all uh, machined aluminum. So I got it to where it worked, and I said, Jim, I think we're there. So then I sent him back to cores, and he sent me uh -huh. two brand new blowers. And but it kept it down, you know, where I wanted it, and right. then I, then it came all of a sudden. It was the well, okay. Well, now we have to deal with the radiator. There's mm -hmm. no room left for the radiator, so right. that's where the split radiator split radiator came, came from. And yeah. that that idea also came from IndyCar mm -hmm. because you know back there you, they were exposed really right. back in right. those days. You could yeah. see the radiators like in the McLarens and the Eagles and stuff. They were sitting out there in the pods. Yeah. And well, why, why not just split the radiator? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where that came yeah. about. Now that was electronically fuel injected. Was that an Excel unit? Back no, then? that was uh, John Meany and was it, yeah, John Meany. okay, with DFI. DFI, okay, right, yes. Right, in fact, right. I still, digital fuel injection. Digital fuel injection. I still have yeah. all the original digital fuel injector 
injection stickers and stuff on really? there. And the, and the original box is not hooked up. But <laughs> okay, you still have the box. Wow. It's still wow. mine where it used to be, yeah. But yeah. now, it, now once, we, once we bought it back, after we sold it, mm -hmm. it was everything was outdated, and, it, and so we went with a Holly unit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you sold that car, and then what's the story behind bringing it back? Ooh, that's interesting because we kind of were like, all right, we're done. You know, right. we're, we're going to We've done on. this. We've been there. Yeah. We've got the T-shirt. <laughs> right, right. So you, yeah. I mean, where do you go from there? Right, right. exactly. So, yeah. what, and you weren't going to do a Rick Dobberton and do a surface orbiter. No, so. no it's been done. <laughs> darn, I would have done it, too. But darn you, Rick. <laughs> so that idea was taken, so we decided yeah, yeah. it was... Going to kick back, so that's when you started your your hot rod nostalgia business. Then? Yeah, that the, about the, that time? yeah, but basically the IndyCar car business. Okay, the IndyCar car business. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, we and I, I worked on a couple of cars. I I chopped uh, an old I don't remember what year it was an old twenty something for a friend of mine who was building a rat rod, and I did something channeled something else. I was tinkering around on cars, mm -hmm. but uh, it was just the family and everything. Um, and then. Uh, the IndyCar business came about, I think, around the late, like late 99, 2000. And that was buying IndyCar bodies and stuff and then yeah. selling it to, like, restaurants and things like that, Yeah, right? well, yeah. Because you sent me that photo. It's such a great photo of all these tail sections in your garage. There oh, yeah. 20 of them. Oh, 50. <laughs> or more. Yeah, and they're still there. And, by the way, they are for sale. <laughs> they are for sale. <laughs> Call me at yes. BR549. <laughs> so, but we, we would buy obsolete race cars, mm -hmm. Indy cars, and all their inventory, the teams were done with. and uh, Or, unfortunately, some teams would go belly up, and they, they had to sell it. Uh, liquidate you know, Yeah, liquidate yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was able to purchase these things. And once I started doing that, I had teams calling me, saying, hey, we're going to have this. Really? Have this. Well, wow. the problem is, it's not we're not made of money. So it was all right. of a sudden, like, so then we had a line of credit, <clears throat> okay. which okay. made Deb nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, cause it got extensive. <laughs> I mean, and you had to buy cash, you know, you right, had to buy right. cash and, uh, very few teams would take a check. Uh, but it was cash. So we had to come up with it. So if they would take a check, did you bought two? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, buy two, get the third one free. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, I did. We did that. Started that up in late '99, 2000, and we we're still doing it. Uh -huh. We're still yeah. doing it. At one yeah. time, we had 12 Indy cars, and wow. And that warehouse that you saw photos yeah. of. Yeah. Well, we're, we've sold our last Indy car. Uh, we sold them to people who are driving them in vintage mm -hmm. series. We've sold them to uh, guys that stick them in hotel rooms, uh, go kart tracks. Okay. Uh, they have them in go kart tracks. The last one we had was the one I always wanted to hold on to because I bought it. It was Will Power of okay. you know, you know yeah. Penske Racing. Yeah, exactly. He's I, still racing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. It, was, it was his rookie champ car from wow. 19, uh, what was it? Uh, whatever year it was, uh, 90 something. But uh, okay. uh, 2006. It was okay. a 2006. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I'm bad with dates. So he's been racing for 18 years in IndyCars, then, if that was his first year. Yeah, yeah. He, and wow. He's, yeah, he, wow. And, and uh, he raced. And still for, right there. Well, he almost won the championship this year. Yeah, almost. He's won it yeah. before, and he, of course, yeah. he won Indy 500 in 2018. Yeah. yeah. So he, we had that car, and we had a small displacement put motor put in it by another race team, and we were having fun with it, you know, uh -huh. driving around. You took the Phoenix track. Yeah, Did went you? to yeah. the Phoenix I Oval. You told me about that. Yeah. Deb and I and our daughter Alex went out to it. Yeah. And yeah. you know, it was like. Because we we were just members of this uh, uh, this uh, vintage indie racing thing, okay. and they had such a great deal. So yeah, all the members can come out here. It's like for two hundred bucks, two days of racing, breakfast and lunch. Yeah, it was like that's a no brainer. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so we're out there at the track, and you know, I'm like somewhat nervous, but I said, how hard can this be? You know, right? And it's just a big go kart. So we got it fired up, and I got out on the track, and there's all these vintage. I mean, there's you know, five, $10 million Indy cars, you know, like old Eagles yeah. and Gurney Eagles and stuff. Yeah. And I was the slowest one out there that day. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Deb, Deb, I remember coming in, making a stop and she goes, what's wrong? <laughs> remember? And, this is, yeah. and then you're saying, this is as fast as it'll go. I had to, yeah. well, the gearing was all wrong. Okay. It, was, it was really a, you know, to make excuses, it, we had the gearing all wrong because, and then we had it in road course configuration. Oh, okay. And you're and which yeah, oval track is completely different. Right. So oh, yeah. any any speed I got up, it was sucking down and mm -hmm. it was slowing it down. And I had some people look at it afterwards that were uh, engineers at race teams, and they said, "Well, yeah, those wings just killed you on the." Oh, okay. Speed. Okay. But I still killed down for us. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I probably I don't know if I would have went much faster, 
but and then the gearing and the rear, uh, the whole gearing was set up. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, when we had the transmission rebuilt for that car, uh, I said, you know, I'd like it. You know, I don't know, know what we're going to do with it, so kind of just put it in the middle. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It, it didn't work. But anyhow, so so speaking of Indy cars, let, let me interrupt because there's a great story about a car that you found at an auction with a buddy of yours. Oh yeah, the turbine car. Yes. So tell us that story because that's a great story. Ah, story, yeah. So we'll back up by saying that that um, Shelby entered two cars at what we, what year was it? 70? 68. 68. 68. Two in, two turbine cars. Two turbines at at Indy, mm-hmm. and then pulled them out at the last minute because. Well, he, you know, yeah, because they weren't really legal. Let's right? make up a story, right? <laughs> but uh, he he denied all that. But, right, right. Uh, he 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 made them illegal, or mm-hmm. whoever was in charge of that department. He didn't want to admit it. It was Bruce McLaren because they weren't fast enough, right? Right, right. And, and, well, and USAC and USAC had limited the inlet size, and you listen, right? So and they said this is all you can run, and that really killed all the turbine. Cars yes, it because did. Grant Telly said the same thing. He couldn't go fast because they restricted him too much. Right. But Shelby. Because he had Goodyear behind him, right? Yeah, Goodyear and, and Botany 500. And Botany 500, so it was like trying to do something. So they, they, some kind of, they worked it out where the annulus changed, the restriction changed, right? Yeah, they were out they could, the car. They could had a little cable that enlarged enlarge it. <laughs> and and it, the story I'm told uh, by some people that were there, they said you could actually hear that thing opening up and closing. I'm sure, because and, the pitch is going to change radically. Right. And, uh, yeah, of course, yeah. McLaren was running that car, car Bruce McLaren. Uh-huh. And he was terrified because there was no between. It was an outside, you know, you sat towards the outside of the walls mm-hmm. because the turbine was on your left to equal out the balance, put the weight on the inside, most of the weight. Yeah. And if you would even brush the wall, you'd probably road rash your <laughs> arm off. I mean, it was, it was a it was a quarter inch of fiberglass. Between and you the, and the wall. Well, and, and a, like an what the inch square of- frame. I got yeah. photos. And it's, yeah. when we were doing it, it's like madman would run this yeah, thing yeah yeah so they took it out there and uh they they you know usac really restricted it and shelby would you know he was just wow we're just gonna you know throw in the towel mm-hmm. and that's pretty much there was two cars built only two cars yeah well the other one was a uh, well is that exact duplicate just the paint was flip-flop mm-hmm. so this particular car and and back in the 60s 69 hot wheels did did little hot wheels of these cars okay so I knew the car because I was I bought them back in '69 and, uh-huh. and we were in indie fans anyways way yeah. back then. So we go over a friend of mine uh, who had bought the Thunderbird from Deb and I. Okay. He, okay. he we got to know him really well and and he had some money and he said, hey, I, I'm going to go over. I know Carol Shelby. He's having a uh, auction, uh-huh. a bunch of memorabilia trophies and some of his cars and mm-hmm. some of his prototype cars for the Viper because okay. he's involved in that. Right. Right. So. We get over there and we're walking around and I took four hundred dollars with me. I think, you know, what, yeah. what am I? You know, we'll buy something. Buy something, maybe yeah. a big hamburger or something. But <laughs> and we get over there and we're walking around and I see this thing that it, it looked like it was burnt, but it was. It was just so badly the paint was everything. And the problem was is it sat at Universal Studios outside because right. this particular Shelby turban was used as a promo for Universal Studios for the Paul Newman. Uh, movie winning winning okay. okay so and it sat there for a long time and then shelby just pulled it out of there and took it to the auction it was up for a children's heart fund and uh, i just told dave the gentleman that was with me that i go do you know what this is and he goes no nah, no nah, but it's ugly you know mm-hmm. and he said a couple other words and i said this is the find here this is it there's two of these yeah and one of two yeah one of two and, and i said a piece of history yeah and sh- yeah and it, it really is and so I told Dave, I said, you know, I got 400 bucks, but you got a line of credit with these people. He, mm-hmm. said, he said, you listen, we need to get this car. I said, really? And he put all his trust into me, you know, yeah, and he said, yeah. you got to buy this car. I said, yeah. I'll split it with you. And again, it's like so many other times I <laughs> put my mouth in front of my wallet. <laughs> but I said, we really got to do this. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's a, if you find something like that, you yeah. got to pull you, out all you the stuff. Exactly. You and have you, to go for it. You have to. And then you yeah. worry about the finances later. Right. Or right. the ramifications. <laughs> the ramifications. Guess what I bought, Deb? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget that. That was, that was a phone call? Or yeah. 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 After the fact. After, well, of course. Whether we could do this yeah. or not, I was like, guess what I bought? What is it? You're supposed to ask for forgiveness? Better to beg forgiveness than ask permission. That's right. 
so anyhow, we they the auction starts. Day sitting there, and I go. He says, "What should we go to?" I says, "Let's just go. Let's go." Yeah. You know. Yeah. And it it, st- it sputtered in the teens, like fifteen, twenty thousand, or fifteen, sixteen, twenty thousand dollars, or something like that. And I thought, "Oh my gosh, we're going to steal this car." Mm-hmm. Well, then it went up to thirty, I believe, thirty or thirty-two thousand dollars. And he goes, "How?" F-? You know, he just was terrified. Yes. Yeah. Even yeah. though he had the money, he goes, "Are you sure?" I said, "Yes." And uh, so we, I think we got the car for. 32 or 33 after the, uh, what do you call those guys? The, the yeah. commission? Or yeah, what? the auction commission. Yeah. 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 And after that, we, you know, after the auction went out there and it was like a flood of people, you know, no, the, oh my God, you know, they mm-hmm. some of these people knew. And then Carol came over and that's when I met Carol. Okay. And he, you know, of course, took my hand and we did, you know, the photograph stuff and right, not right. for the media. And then I he signed it and that began our friendship. But it just really, there was a frenzy around. I got photos of people in the background, like, you know, what's going on? What's doing this? Uh-huh. So that's how we got the car. And Dave, uh, it was not much more than a month or two later, he just didn't want in on the car. Okay. So I we, I was able to buy his half. Uh-huh. So we were still in it pretty cheap. Yeah. Deb and I. So um, then we started restoring it, just taking it all apart. And and I call, uh, Carol gave me his card when we mm-hmm. were there. And, and he says, if anybody tells you not to talk to me, you make sure you get through. Because, yeah, okay. you call Carol Shelby up, and you, you get, right. like, four or five people you had to go exactly, through. You know, exactly. What's the square you know. root of 3,422? I need it now. <laughs> I have no idea, but I'm supposed to talk to Carol Shelby. <laughs> and I finally get through, and I talk to him, and I ask him questions about the car. And he says, Matt, he says, it's been too long. He says, you probably know more about it than I do. Yeah. And I, and I fortunately, I did. It's back yeah. when I could read, and I read <laughs> anything I could on this car, you know, and about it, and all the, uh-huh. the anything. You know, yeah. I went to the museum, or sent, uh, request to the Indy Museum the for Speedway photos. Museum. Yeah, yeah, and they were yeah. very generous. Mm-hmm. Sent me all kinds of stuff on it. Very cool. So that's uh, how we got the car, and we just started restoring it. And then I called. Um, it didn't have the engine in it. It was a T fifty eight turbine, uh-huh. which was out of a uh, you know a military like a helicopter. helicopter. Yeah, yeah. Like Vietnam era. And um, I got a hold of uh, Art Arfon's Art Arfon's son. I, I don't remember his name. I had been art. I don't know. But he, he built me a T-58 for it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he built the T-58. So you did have an engine for it. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He built, and it was beautiful. I mean, it was just wow. like, look, at the show, it should be here. You know, it's uh-huh. just everything. Yeah. He really, he powder coated everything, and then everything was kind of shiny and chrome. And so we had that, but we never put the engine in. We had it on, because we started doing shows with it right away. So, so we, that way you could debut it, or you yeah, could because, outside. Yeah, yeah, because you could not see the turbine. Right, if, right. If it's, you know... Because it was all enclosed by the body. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then we had it on display in this little thing I made, and that's how we did some shows with it. And then it got to the point where I, you know, I, to this day I want to just croak because we ended up selling it. Right, and right. It's, and the guy who owns it now it happens to be a friend of mine who has a, a, several McLarens. Okay. Uh, where is it now? I believe it's in Florida. In Florida? Okay. Yeah, a really nice gentleman owns it, uh-huh. and uh, he's... He used to race scarabs and stuff with all those guys back in the okay. day. Okay. Okay. And he and, he, and Bruce McLaren, he's really good friends with Bruce's family. Mm-hmm. So he ended up getting it down the road. I sold it to another gentleman, and then this gentleman now owns it. Uh-huh. But uh, it it's worth many, many, many times. Really? Yeah. I, I, it's, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's a heartbreaker, right? That's yeah. A, well, the we, one that got away. Well, we yeah. really missed out. We had the the uh, Andretti. Rookie car, okay. Mario Andretti and rookie okay. car, and that's the one that you should slap me right now. <laughs> Deb already has, so hit the other side so it's even. <laughs> Seriously, oh my gosh! So, but anyhow, you know that was the story. Of the term we stored it, it came out really nice. In fact, Ron Butler, who was the crew chief on the car, mm-hmm. and and a crew chief for uh, Shelby during the Cobra days uh-huh. and and the Le Mans days with the GT forties, he uh, he had the other car. Yeah. And it was over in uh, California somewhere, and I got a hold of them because the paint jobs were flip flop. Mine was gold with blue, and the other one was blue with gold. Okay. But we didn't have the codes. Okay. So he was kind enough to. We went over there, the family, and we went mm-hmm. over there. And uh, the only way we could go is I had to promise them Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, boy, this is expensive. <laughs> But we got we went to Disney and then we got up there and Ron was very gracious and he showed us the other car and then I took pictures and and I had a uh, old Ford paint chip cars okay. and yeah. we found the right colors uh-huh. and then I took it back to Doug Jerger Squeegees yeah and uh, he painted the car yeah. fantastic so, and then I had uh, uh, another gentleman uh, letter it but backing up a little bit 
during the, the process of getting it restored, the first thing we did was we took it to a, a sandblaster. Okay. And we knew the car, obviously, what it was, but I told the sandblaster, as you go down, take it lightly. And we took down, because it was painted at Universal Studios, and it was in a couple of sci-fi movies. Okay. Background. And they painted it weird, and they had all kinds of, because it looked weird. So yeah, they had it. yeah, yeah. And uh, so he took it down, and then he told me, hey, I got to the final goal, and you could see the Bruce McLaren driver and Ron really? Butler. Yeah, Carol wow. Shelby Enterprises. Did you get photos of that? Oh, yeah. Oh, in that's fact, very cool. In fact, there was a sticker on the side that said uh, Shelby American. I think it's Shelby American. It's a mm -hmm. big uh, graphic sticker. And I was able to peel that off. You know, with the heat wow. gun and stuff. And then I stuck wow. it on a, a, a piece of aluminum, brushed uh -huh. aluminum, and then I put it between some plexiglass. And I and then I one of the times we saw Carol, I had him sign it. So uh -huh. I still got that. Yeah, one. excellent, yeah. excellent. So you have a piece of the car. You have a little I, bit of DNA of the car. Yeah, I still do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah a little that's DNA. Great. So let's 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 fast forward then to buying the T Bird back. Yeah, well, that was after we yeah, we did that and then in, in two thousand thirteen we heard about this reunion uh -huh. at the uh, in Decoin for the Street Machine Nationals. Yeah, and you know, we Rick got the theme thing. We went back and forth. Do we really want to go? We we're talking to Dab, and we thought well, it'd be kind of fun, you know, and to go back there and, and see everybody. Yeah, which was fun. And uh, so we get we make the trip back there, and and we're looking around, and and it just kind of bit me because a lot of the guys still had their cars still had their you know? cars. yeah i mean yeah. yeah a lot of guys still had their cars some yeah. didn't and so that it, might have been hard to be there without your car it was yeah it was yeah we yeah. had a rental yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's mad and debbie hey it was a rental <laughs> look 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 at that like, yeah it doesn't even have a fake blower on it. <laughs> yeah that's right but uh so <laughs> we had a rental that was good <laughs> Oh, it's true. <laughs> so we get there, and it just the bug bit me, and uh -huh. I, I know, I know, and Deb was the same thing, and, yeah. and it was just like, yeah. and we we talked about it about, and I, I I know I've told you this before. We were Sunday night getting ready to head out and go home after the show, and uh, I said, you know, I'd really like to build another car, and Deb said, you better build another car. <laughs> so I had to take that one and ride it all the there way. There you go. There you go. And. Fortunately, we knew where the Thunderbird was. It mm -hmm. was in pretty bad shape. Uh, it bounced around for three different owners. Uh. And the final owner, the car was pretty rough, but the final owner actually thought enough about it to put it in his living room. Okay. Even though it was, Really? Yeah. It, wow. I mean, if you're That's listening, cool. I'm sorry. But <laughs> it looked like the car sat at the far end of a driving range. Right. It was all... <laughs> oh, oh. Seriously, it was... Da, 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 da. All kinds of dents all over it? Oh, oh yeah, wow. all on the sides. Wow. Like somebody just threw their door open into it. No, or like a driving range. Really? Yeah, it looked like oh, it was crazy. So we took that with a ball peen hammer. <laughs> Maybe I don't <laughs> wow. know. Yeah, but Ooh, and it was sure. the the everything and there was yeah. From what I understood, it sat outside in Pennsylvania for about a year. And oh, all so maybe it might have been hail, maybe? Well, it's on the side, though. Well, hail, that. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hail, hail. You know, so, and then there was this big cable around the front end of the chassis, and I go, what's that? And he goes, well, I dragged that. That's how I moved the car. As I get my tractor, <laughs> and we drag it around because the front disc brakes oh. were all uh, seized oh. up. Yeah. yeah. And it took, it. I don't know, we had 10 or 12 people just to push it into the trailer because wow. it didn't run. Yeah. And then we got it back, uh, and... It was in 2000, late 2013, and uh, we were, you know, silly, and said, well, let's get it ready for 2014. So oh, it was balls stressed. to the walls. And so I have to tell you, there's, you sent me a photo along the same time when you were doing this. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's my favorite. When, of, when we get talking about stuff, it always comes to the top of my head. It's my favorite photo you've ever sent me. And all it was was a picture of you'd been sanding. You, <laughs> I think it was you and your daughter. My wasn't daughter, it? yeah. Yeah, had been sanding on the car. So the image is a garage door closed, which is the dullest thing in the world. And there's this patina of pink. Dust on, everywhere. Pink dust on the floor. And I, to this day, I love that photo yeah. because you look at that photo and think, oh, my God. You know, how much work is that, right? Like this, you know? And then you gave me a little vial. I still a have vial, a little yeah. vial of, of pink. You know? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know? yeah, that's the uh, that's pink paint. And that it's was original. paint from your car. Yeah, yeah, because we block sand and block sand. And then I got with our painter, uh, Squeege. And Squeege, he, yeah. And he says, don't take it down all the way to where I can't figure out the graphics again. Mm -hmm. But take all the... Because it had been re-cleared several times okay. by this one guy. Yeah. And, uh, but the paint had faded really bad. There was dings and cracks and stuff. And then a million little... 
golf ball dents sure. or whatever yeah. you want. And, and that's true. I mean, there was a ton of these golf ball dents. Wow. And I talked to Squeege, and I right before I took it to him, I said, we, we, we sanded it down, got it down all the way to where you can faintly see the lines. Mm-hmm. The color really didn't matter because he still remembered what the colors okay. were from okay. clear back in 88. Yeah. And... Uh, I said, well, and what I did also, be, I'm bringing it over to you in a day or two. And I, I circled all the dents because now you can't see them because it's not, you know. Right, they it's, kind not, of, it's, it's not And glossy. he just started laughing. I'll never, he goes, don't do that. <laughs> he says, we're never going to. He says, I took it to him. had all these little circles all over <laughs> with grease pencil or something. And he goes, don't do that. He says, the whole th- we're going to go over the whole thing. Uh-huh. So that's what they did. And they, so why he had the car, we took it to him in November and why he had the car, I had the engine, the transmission, the rear end, of course, was still in the car, mm-hmm. so we could roll around. And I, so I had the re- engine uh, uh, gone through, uh-huh. and then I, just for grins, I had the transmission gone through, and it was still pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, I went through the blowers and everything and, and did all that kind of work yeah. that we could. And, sure. and it was like, Squeege, you know, he's a great painter, and he um, had the car and he didn't get it back to us until uh, June 4th or 5th. And oh the Steam Machine Nationals was the 20 something. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so here everything had to be reassembled. Back. I mean, I had the glass out, yeah. everything. So we wow. had to reassemble everything uh, and put the motor in it and whatnot. And it was just thrashing, just like the old days. Yep. <laughs> yeah. like Deb was out. We were out there late at night, you know, just really? thrashing away on it. Wow. Yep. Oh. Don't, isn't that right? That is right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we did. A few nights to remember, in other that's words. That's right, yeah. And what was funny is, you know, we had this thought, and I just thought, you know, okay, we're bringing back this. But who's really, is anybody going to really accept this car? I mean, it, it did well back in the day, but is mm-hmm. it really going to be anything yeah. that, and, and we got, well, we're doing it for ourselves. Yeah. As I told you, I thought, well, maybe buying this car and restoring it would be cheaper than building, building a new one. Building a new one, one. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. You know, well, it was we it have was three, the other way around. Right? We have three times the cost restoring it than we did the initial build cost of everything. Oh boy! Buying the mo- you know, everything. Of course, yeah. Alan Root mm-hmm. did the motor for yeah. us. Yeah. But all the incidentals and everything we paid yeah. for, and then of course the paint job, and it was three times more to do that. Whew, and it just kept escalating and escalating and escalating. And <laughs> I was like, why? What are we doing? <laughs> why are we doing this, right? Yeah. right? But then you got there. Got there, and it was and well received. Yeah, it was. It was a hit. Yeah, it absolutely. Was, we were so. I mean, everybody signed the the, the your, you, 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 yeah, you included. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so every, yeah, anybody, and it wasn't just anybody. <laughs> I'm serious, you know, because we Tommy Ivo has been with the car and uh-huh. stuff, and yeah. some other people. And yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, so anybody that was. You know, friends of ours from back then who mm-hmm. were involved with us in yeah. photo shoots. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Harry Hibbler, sure. John Bechtel. John Bechtel. Yeah. John yeah. Bechtel. And then, of course, all of our, our peers there with Rick Doberton, Rod Saberry, Mark Grimes, mm-hmm. you know, everybody. Sure. Uh, and then recently, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, we had uh, Larry Wood sign it for uh-huh. Hot Wheels. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just. And then the car was in a commercial in the Super Bowl. Yes. What, two years ago? 2019. 19, 19, 19, so five years ago. Did you have something else you wanted to add? I just wanted to say that the paint job was way off the charts compared to the first time around. Okay. Price-wise. Okay. No, oh. no, no, no. Well, not okay. price-wise. Just, just, right. that, in, no, term, in terms of what he did. Oh, technology. yes. Yeah. The technology. The technology he did was, such a great job. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, New paint. Yeah. Technology, yes. Okay. Yes, it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. It was so much better. The first, yeah, the first one actually started fading when we took it out to the street machine in the 80s. Yeah. It, and Squeeze told me, he says, this paint, because it was pearl and it was just so fade, you know, the fade job he did, he's, and mm-hmm. it started fading right away. Yeah. Because it was a fluorescent type of paint. Right, right. right. It's very susceptible to UV light. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then how did the TV commercial come about? That was like Doritos commercial? Doritos yeah, commercial. Yeah. We, uh, I had a friend of mine who's passed away, but he was a member of the Television Motion Picture Car Club. Okay. And uh, yeah, because you guys used to come out to the West Coast to that to that little motion picture car club event. Yeah, well, you came yeah, with us one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yes. you came at CBS Studios. Yeah. So his name was John Ewald, and and he was a member of the club, and uh, he called me one day and said, "Hey, the club is looking for an indie car to run in, in uh, for a TV series, NCIS LA, whatever NCIS LA." Yeah. yeah. So anyhow. And they want to. The th- they just need an Indy car because they want to drive it through the streets. It's going to be part of the program. Mm-hmm. So then, he put me in touch with uh, a gentleman, uh, 
that was uh, in charge of the production of that particular uh, NCIS at CBS. And so he put me in touch and he said, here's what we, here's the scenario. He mm -hmm. says, the scenario of the deal is um, th there's going to be a group of people at a racetrack and somebody, a girl's going to steal this Indy car mm -hmm. and run through the streets of LA being chased by a whole bunch of cops. And got to the point where I said, well, who's going to drive this? He said, well, we'd like you to drive it if you want. Mm -hmm. Put on a wig, sit low, because yeah. there's not going to be no close-ups right. of that. And I thought, this is really cool, yeah. you know? Yeah. So getting chased by cops down, you know, <laughs> right, with an Indy car. So we got How many all... times you get a chance to do that? I right? mean, you know, right. two or three times a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happens all the time. Yeah, I mean, I got busted in that you car. Did. <laughs> you did get busted in your car on that. I got, yeah. <laughs> My, that's another story. That's, yeah. another, that's another story. <laughs> so we... We getting it all set, and I actually took the car out in our neighborhood uh -huh. because I didn't know what the, the the boundaries were with this car doing that kind of stuff. So, without the body work on it, I took took the car out and ran around our neighborhood mm -hmm. and just kind of seeing where where it start to slide on with these slicks on it on a street. You know, you run into pebbles or anything yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. And so we got all set to do that, and I think it was a, two days before we were set to go over there, they they canceled it Ugh. because of. Uh, at the time, the president was coming to town, oh. and they had to shut down the deal. Was, shut you know, down the city. Uh, that, yeah. that closes everything. So they said, we'll do it after that. Well, in the meantime, they decided not to use the Indy car, and they went with a, a, a real Cobra, okay. like a 427, which okay. was a good choice. Sure. Good choice. Yeah. So, But in there somewhere, uh, the president of the car club at the time, and the founder, it was Ken Latka, and if actually he's here today, uh -huh. uh, he, we talked about, he said, well, we'll, you know, we'll get you in the club now. We want you this kind of stuff because mm -hmm. this, our friend John talked us up a little bit. And then he started doing research on us. Mm -hmm. So oh, these guys are legit. So yeah. we got in the club and we had several other things come up. But they always you can't, it's like, you know, that's the movies, you know, yeah. that's just what yeah. happens. Yep. They, that's what happens. Yep. So. Early 2019, or what was 2019, January, so probably in, uh, what well, was December? Early December, uh -huh. uh, I was contacted by a gentleman named uh, Phil Fioria, Phil Fiori, that runs a, a company that supplies vehicles and stuff to the industry. Okay. It's called Next Pictures. Okay. And he, you know, they call him up. Mm -hmm. Well, I got to know uh, Phil. He's also in the car club. So... Doritos or Frito Lay was looking to do this commercial, mm -hmm. and they wanted a whole different th uh, theme. So they got Chance the Rapper, yeah, and the Backstreet Boys. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, what's going on here? Yeah, and and then this, I didn't know it at the time. And Phil called me and said, "We got a gig for you guys. We mm -hmm. want to do a, a shoot with your Thunderbird." And I remember I said, "Well, is this like a print ad mm -hmm. or something?" He said, "No, we want to do a, a TV commercial." Yeah. So we thought, "Oh, this is cool. You know, yeah. we're gonna find out." So we get over there to the Ontario air Airport. And that's where a lot of stuff is shot. Okay. I, mean, I mean, Seal Team, the movie Seal okay. Team. There, Ford yeah. versus Ferrari. Okay, that was all Shelby, shot yeah, yeah, Shelby shot okay. was. In fact, that hangar is where our stuff was hung, uh, okay. shot. Uh -huh. And and we get over there, and it was a huge production. I mean, it was just like wow, a Hollywood. You know, I had all these trucks and cameras and things. And I go, Phil, what is this for? He goes, oh, it's for a Super Bowl commercial. <laughs> and I go, wow, we got to get this right. <laughs> we hope this thing starts <laughs> and, and has gas in it, right? Yeah. yeah, she can tell you stories about uh, running, out of, running gas. out of gas. Running out of gas. <laughs> Matt, you got a full tank? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guess not. Yeah. My gosh. So did they, did they actually paint the airplane or was that just... Was that just added in? That was, uh, that's a cool story, too. And I'll try and make it really fast. So we get over there, and we do the commercial. And, but the correlation between the Thunderbird and Chance and uh, uh, the Backstreet Boys, was it was Chance going back in the time into the 80s. Okay. okay. The Backstreet's, I want it my way. Okay. That way. That way, that, yeah. yeah. Well, her way. So <laughs> <laughs> it must be her way. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a man who's been married for 44 oh, years. Yeah. We're, I feel we're safe. <laughs> and so that was the correlation. He goes back in time in the 80s. He's dreaming like this. And then the next shot, you'll see the car going. And that's me driving the car okay. along the mountains there. Yeah. I, they, I was supposed to look like Chance and wear a hat. Now. Yeah. I don't know how long we got, but if we got three years, I could tell you a story. <laughs> 
this much time. <laughs> so, so, so anyhow, we uh, did the commercial. Everything went really well. You know, that was a that was a really fun cool. deal. So cool. That was that was really good. Yeah. And then we were going to do another commercial with the IndyCar for Dell when they were sponsoring uh, one of the Formula One races, and they, they were, we were getting ready to do that. And they said, do we want to. We want you to come over to Fontana and do some laps. We're going to film it, and then we're going to Photoshop the Dell stuff on it. Okay. And, uh, okay, it's back and forth, back and forth. And then all of a sudden I get a call. Well, it's, we're scratched. We're going to do the whole car, just fake car, you know, whatever. Just Okay, CGI. CGI, oh, yeah, okay. So, right. which was cheaper for them. Sure. But getting back to the airport or airplane deal is the craziest thing is because the, the art director for Frito-Lay was asked Phil Fiore, so when he was looking for a Thunderbird, hey, do you know this guy's got this Thunderbird? Because we found it in the, one of the magazines. Mm-hmm. And he goes, yeah, that's Matt Hayes' car, and he's a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. So that's how that all became. Okay. And then apparently somewhere I talked to the art director during the shoot when we didn't have to do anything, and they, he, he really liked all these old 80s pro street cars. Okay. He was really into it. Okay. So obviously he caught Dobberson's J2000 mm-hmm. graphics, okay. and he... Photoshopped them onto the plane, and that's really? why you see that. So the J, so the J two thousand graphics are on the airplane. Yes. Oh, okay. Which is okay. really interesting now. Yes. Which is yes. really you got the Thunderbird Absolutely. in that. Yeah. So that's yeah. how that came about. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And then you ended up with the J two thousand. Yes. Okay. After we have to do that quickly because we're running out of time. All right. Well, <laughs> I mean, so we. Uh, <laughs> let me, I told you we could do two hours. Oh man. my god. Two hours yeah. so easy. Oh. Uh, Knew where the car was. Car was basically lost for 20 years. Uh, Rick had sold it and then went to somebody else, and the guy that owned it uh, just stuck it away in a in a warehouse, literally. Okay. And Deb and I and a couple other people knew where it was. But then nine about nine well nine years ago, I found out who it was and started calling him nine years ago about four or five times a year. I offered him money. Wow. I didn't have. Back, it's, okay. it's true. Of course. It's true. It's true. <laughs> but we had to find out. So he said, make me an offer. I offered money I didn't have. Mm-hmm. But I needed to find because I figured the car is so popular. If I find, if I get a price, I could get investors. Yeah. Or somebody or somebody would want to buy it. Right. Just well, get it out of would, captivity. Yes. So yes. to get back out to everybody's seat. Right, right. So every year, every year, every year. And then he said, well, make me another offer. I said, I don't want to bid against myself. I right. Said, Do That's you got, silly. I yeah. said, I don't care what it is. You have got to have a number. Mm-hmm. And he wouldn't give me one <clears throat> until last August. He said, I'm going to take it to auction. I think I'm going to just take it to auction. And I said, well, then you reserve? And he goes, yeah. I said, mm-hmm. well, then what's your reserve price? Yeah. He said, yeah. well, let me talk to my auction guy. I said, you know, go to auction. You're going to spend this money. You're going to spend this money. you got to get the thing 10% running. 10% on 10%. Your you're yeah. going to spend a ton of money. He says, no, I own the auction company. So oh. <laughs> that shot that. Then there's that. <laughs> they shot that down. <laughs> yeah, well, what? So anyhow, <laughs> he... He finally gave me, he said, my, my appraiser came back, and he said, it's worth, you know, I got this on an email. He says, this is, it's worth this much to this much. Mm-hmm. He said, I realize the high might be high. You never know. Yeah. And it could go lower. Mm-hmm. And after nine years, I wasn't going to screw around. So yeah. I, I gave him the high price. I said, we'll give you the high price. Wow. We'll, give, we'll go the full Monty. Wow. And uh, I went to bed that night and got a text back. The, I woke up in the morning. There was a text. says, I accept your offer. Wow. And... Stars fell from the heavens, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Bank accounts the angels, sunk. The, ankle, <laughs> the angels sang. The, sang. Oh. Every, oh yeah, it was crazy. The Backstreet Boys came by, yeah. and I guess they wanted it that way. So yeah. <laughs> uh, that's real, that's really it. It took it took nine years, wow. and, and I didn't want to. You know, it was very few people knew about it where it was. So I, it was just it became an obsession. And the problem and the, the situation is, I wanted to get out. And let the public enjoy it. Sure. And, and down the road, I hopefully yeah. a museum or somebody will, will take buy it, it yeah. take it because it needs to be right. seen for generations. Exactly. Like a lot of Such these cars. Such an amazing car. Just, just like this show, everybody's wow. You know, look at it, all these different cars, and yeah. it is an amazing car. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, we could do you, a whole story. We could do a whole show just on that car. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. The and, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, the Peterson Museum <clears throat> would be great, wouldn't it? That would be fantastic. It would be neat. I mean, yeah. w- that's our goal. Deb and I do not want to die with these things. We right. would like them to go somewhere, right, uh, to where people can enjoy them. And, and, yeah, and like, like a lot of these cars should sure. be. You know, Absolutely. Galvin, Ford, Peterson. They have a lot of these cars yep. they're preserving. Yep. Yep. So yep. that's the deal. We could do another hour, right? We could oh, uh, definitely yeah. do another hour, but yeah. we don't. Time has run out, right? So we want to thank arp.bolts.com. They're our sponsor. And, and the Grand National Roaster Show, arp-bolts.com. Did I not say that correctly? 
I sometimes run it together. Okay. All right. Well, we want to thank those guys. They're all our friends. You probably got ARP bolts on the T-Bird, right? Uh, I have a few, yeah. Yes. And yeah. thank you, Jeff, for having us. Oh, yes. yeah, dude. Yes. You know, it's you, so much fun. I mean, these these two people have been, I, I don't want to say they're my favorite people because that pisses off some people yeah, when I yeah. do that. But, but we have known each other a long time. A long time. And, and it's it's. Uh, some of the other shows have talked about family. I mean, that's the way it feels. Yeah. It yes. really does. It really feel does. Right. Yeah. It's great to be. So thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, if you like the stories we're telling you, oh, first of all, we have to thank the guys at the Initial Roaster Show, John Buck and Kevin Doyle. We couldn't do this without them. And uh, thank you guys for coming. This has been a lot of fun. If you like the stories we're telling, keep with us, and we'll keep telling you more.